The reason is, in, in my view, it's, it's overly broad um, in prohibiting any employee of the federal government from cajoling or arguing with a member of the media about a story. Um, uh, employees of the federal government have First Amendment rights too. Uh, and if, uh, let's say, President Trump or President Biden uh, disagreed with something that was going to be written about them, this would make it a crime for them to call up the social media company and say, that's a lie, take it down, You're, this is outrageous. That's not censorship. Censorship is when the government shuts something off. This is arguing to try and convince someone else to shut it off. And that's the right people have, whether they're in government or outside of government. Uh, obviously, there are places where people go over the line and, th and make threats and suggest you're going to lose your license if you don't do the following thing. That, if, if it's narrow enough to be defined in that kind of way, I'd be happy to take a look at it. But to say that no employee of the government, from the president on down to the millions of people who work in the government, can speak with a social media company or a legacy media company and express their point of view that an article is wrong or that an avenue they're going down is wrong, that would shut off free speech on the part of the, the, the administration and power or, frankly, employees that have nothing to do with one party or the other. So it, it, in my view, it's, a piece of, uh, it's an amendment that is overly broad and hasn't considered what's going to happen when there's a Republican administration that wants to argue that the media is saying crazy things about them. Uh, that makes it, would make it a crime. Uh, to do so. Even the press secretary responding to a question uh, saying, no, that's wrong, you guys have got that wrong, well, that would violate the law. I mean, it, it, this, um, uh, it, it just hasn't, in my opinion, this amendment is far too broad uh, and, and, uh, and, and therefore should not be uh, accepted. Senator Paul? The First Amendment really isn't about protecting the speech of government workers. The First Amendment says Congress shall make no law. It's about limitations on government involvement with speech. It doesn't say that where you're employed that there might not be regulations of what can be said. Every employee of a private company knows you can't run in the office and say your, your boss stinks. I mean, there are limitations on your speech based on your employment, and they have nothing to do with the First Amendment because the First Amendment doesn't have really to do with employment. The First Amendment has to do with Congress shall pass no law. So if Twitter says bad things about me and puts up bad things and takes my down, I have no recourse against Twitter. Same with Facebook. I'm mad. I hate that YouTube has taken my speeches down. I don't do business with them anymore um, because I think they're bigoted, biased, and, uh, and, and wrong-headed on this. But as far as threats, what we do know from the Twitter files is that the government was making threats. We also know this from the uh, depositions in Missouri versus Biden. The threats were, if you don't do this, uh, there may be antitrust action against you. These were overt threats, and this is what's going to make this case so strong. When this gets to the Supreme Court, I think that uh, the free speech advocates are going to win. This is a lawsuit uh, began by Senator Eric Schmidt when he was the Attorney General. But I think the, the evidence is pretty strong that there were threats. There were threats of antitrust action against the companies if they didn't take the material down. There was also threats of, we will remove your 230 protection. Section 230 gives them liability protection, and they were overt threats and threats in writing, basically, saying, if you don't take this down, you know, your 230 protection of liability could go away. We may try to penetrate that liability protection. Finally, there were also information that went back and forth saying that this goes to the top levels of the White House. So the implication being to whoever the top person over at Twitter is, the president knows you're not listening. The president knows. But the thing is, is even if none of those overt threats were made, the, fa the fact of the FBI showing up at your office and describing that it would be a good idea uh, to take down information and just maybe they bring you a cup of coffee, Gatorade or something and tea and say, we just think it would be a good idea, you know. But they also, they come armed, they come with the threat of prosecution, even if they don't say it because they're from the government. I think the, the, uh, I think the government should be absolutely prohibited without question. I think it should be as draconian as you probably can make it and the exception would be illegal. The government is allowed to meet with the illegal, but things that are an opinion, the government has no business in this. And it's just where, where you are on the spectrum of wanting to defend the First Amendment. But there is no real, I think it's important to know, there's no First Amendment right of everybody in government to say whatever they want. 
There's no First Amendment right for them to go to Twitter and say, oh, we, we hate this speech and we don't like this. There is no First Amendment right to that. And the bully nature of this enormous Leviathan government we have is important enough that we do need to restrict it. We need to have hearings on this. We should have a Twitter files hearing. We should have all the people from Twitter brought in that were making these decisions and their coordination. We should be interviewing Ray on this. We should be, we, we don't have any of that. We're getting this as a peripheral argument only because I'm bringing it up here, and it's the only reason this gets any voice in, in any committee on this side of the, of the legislature. So anyway, I, I think it is important that, that we do it, and I think the more significant the restrictions, the better. Senator Romney. Yes, Mr. Chairman, um, I think uh, Senator Paul has made my point for me. Uh, which is, he points out, if the FBI uh, comes to someone and, and, uh, and uh, a social media company or a media company and says, we want you to do this, well, that, that's pretty serious. Uh, if, the, if this amendment were focused on law enforcement, like the FBI approaching someone and threatening them, I, I could well support that. But it isn't. His legislation says any government employee, anyone, including the president, can't contact a media company and say, I disagree with something you're writing. Uh, he said, Congress shall make no law. Well, that's the First Amendment. No one's here making a law uh, saying that something can't be said. Um, uh, he, he suggested that in some cases, threats were made in, in the case he refers to. Well, I agree, if there are threats being made by a government or a government employee, that's something I could, I could uh, support, that kind of an amendment. But that's not, where, that's not what this amendment does. It doesn't talk about threats. It doesn't talk about the FBI or the Justice Department. Uh, it's, it's extremely broad, and for that reason, it, it simply has to fail. Uh, a government, we, we say the word government, and that makes everybody go, oh, yeah, we hate government. But individuals, there are millions of people who work in government. They are citizens of the United States. They have First Amendment rights. Yeah, you're right. The government doesn't have a First Amendment right, but citizens do. Just because you work for government doesn't mean you don't have a First Amendment right, including the right, in my opinion, to talk to a social media company or a legacy media company and say, hey, you're about to write something about me or about something I care about that's wrong. You shouldn't put it out there, and here's why it's wrong. This amendment, the way it's written, would make that illegal. That doesn't make any, any sense. Thank you, Senator Romney. Uh, certainly, I understand uh, uh, Ranking Member Paul's concerns about government uh, censoring views of those with whom it disagrees. Uh, uh, and I totally agree that we must ensure that there are guardrails uh, in place. But Senator's bill, however, uh, uh, filed as this amendment to the text we're considering now, as mentioned by Senator Romney, goes uh, way beyond those concerns, uh, handcuffing the federal government and its ability also, though, I would argue, to protect national security. And the reason for that is it does not differentiate its limitations between American users' free speech, which is clearly protected, versus terrorist uh, communications or foreign uh, propaganda that we know can endanger national security. The broad nature of the text, as well as the extreme penalties on individual U.S. government employees, will have a chilling effect on our ability to fight foreign propaganda, as well as terrorism that appears uh, online. I'm certainly happy to work with Ranking Member on a path forward on this issue, but encourage my colleagues to vote against uh, this amendment. Senator Paul. Going to what type of speech and what type of action is uh, covered by this, the bill says that uh, any employees of the government who seek to direct, coerce, compel, or encourage a provider to take, suggest, or imply that a provider should take or request that a provider take an action to censor speech that is protected by the Constitution. So to the chairman's point, uh, terrorism obviously is not protected by the Constitution. Child pornography is not protected by the Constitution. These are illegal acts. So nothing in this bill prevents anyone from the government with meeting over things that are illegal, anything to do with terrorism. None of that applies to this bill at all. But this goes to the point that if you called up the Washington Times and I said, uh, I, I don't like or I do like your op-ed, that's not covered by this because it would have to be to direct, coerce, compel, or encourage a provider to take, suggest, or imply that a provider should take down. But, uh, you know, if you're trying to remove something, I think it would apply, and I think the bully nature of government, both explicit and implicit, is worth trying to regulate. And I think it is important that we know the Constitution doesn't protect 
an absolute right to speech for anyone in their employment. Employers make uh, safeguards and, and all kinds of restrictions on what you can say. Some of them have morality clauses. There's all kinds of things you can do through employment contract as well as through the government. Um, you know, the people who work in our office don't have a right to go home and say, I hate the person and I'm supporting his opponent. They can do that, but they won't work for us anymore. So we make restrictions on speech all the time. You don't have any kind of absolute right to speech in your employment. The First Amendment isn't about the speech. It's only about the speech indirectly in the sense that it says the government can't do stuff. And this is what all the Bill of Rights were. They weren't affirmative statements of things. For the most part, they were negative statements saying what government cannot do. And uh, I think this is an important debate. I hope this is the beginning of the debate, but I would love to have a recorded vote. Uh, if there's no uh, further debate on the amendment, the uh, questions on his adoption, uh, Kirk will uh, call the roll. Senator Carper.